Welcome to the Xterity Cloud Services video tutorial series, episode 13, eBaz Setup, Installation, and Management. eBaz is a backup as a service that provides your off-cloud and on-cloud servers the ability to backup to backup storage in the Xterity environment. This video will cover setup, installation, and management of the service. The well, first thing you need to do for uh, each server that you want to back up is open the cloud console. Now you can back up off cloud or on cloud. If you're going to be backing up off cloud, the first thing you want to do is create a separate environment for that. And you can use wizard or designer. Um, you don't want to use the same environment that you have for your uh, on cloud servers for this purpose um, for billing. And you'll see why in just a moment. So give this a name and click OK. Now within the uh, designer window here, you're going to want to replace this comms bundle with one that is special for off cloud. And that is over here under comms bundles. You're going to select off cloud, drag it in, hit yes. And you'll notice that your monthly cost goes to zero. This comms bundle is special for off cloud. It doesn't provide network connectivity or manage network information. It does provide the ability to bring in servers for off cloud backups so that you can define the server information without adding additional costs for network connectivity. So once you have this here, you're going to be adding servers. Under the servers section here in the catalog, you're going to see these off cloud objects. Because I replaced the comms bundle, these will be the only servers available. So I'm going to drag one over for each system that you want to back up. Then once you've added them for each one, you're going to double click on the name or the server, and then you're going to set a name, click next. And now we're going to add the backup service. Scroll down in the services window and check the box for eBaz. This will pop up a new window where we're going to set up the parameters for that server. Now you're going to put in your end user email. This is the email that uh, activation and installation information for this server will be sent to. You can do separate emails for each server or the same one. Make sure you have access to those email accounts. Uh, that way you can activate for each server in the backup console. Um, so I'm going to put in Xterity Demos at mailinator.com and you put in your name or your customer's name, whichever you feel appropriate. And you want to choose your machine type. Uh, most important here is uh, the virtual or physical server or workstation properties. Um, if you don't put the right uh, workstation uh, server in physical or virtual settings, the uh, licensing that we set up on the backup con management gateway won't allow the agent to check in properly. So make sure that you select the proper item here because the agent will detect which it is and try to register as that. Um, for the first time you set up backup as a service, uh, as a partner, whether you've done with you have multiple customers or just one, this is the very first time, set your proper notifications. Let's say you only want to get errors and warnings. Once you've done this the first time, you can use the keep current option. You can also set end user notification for this server for these three objects, and those will get sent to the end user email. Alert if no successful backups. So if you don't see backups on this system for 48 hours, uh, the cloud console will alert you to let you know that backups haven't been seen, and you can choose between these time frames. Um, if you back up only during weekdays, you want to set the uh, yes to skip weekends for alerts so you don't get alerted such as for 48 hours that you haven't backed up. You can leave vCPU and memory alone. These are for future use. The last thing you want to do, and this is for quoting purposes, is set the amount of uh, expected total backup storage space you're going to use. So let's say you set 500 gig. Hit OK. What's going to happen is this will be used for quoting so you can see what if I used up all 500 gig, what the quote would be. Um, hit OK, hit OK, and finish and update server. And you'll see this cost goes to 75. If I drag this over and look at the cost, what I'll notice is this server has no cost for all these items. It only has cost for the backup information. So this is a no quote for how much it's going to cost you to backup, and the amount is 500 gigs. So once you've done this for each server that you want to backup or system, then you click Save and Build. Hit OK, and this will submit the build. Now, you're going to get at least three emails, if not more, from this. Uh, if the first time you're setting this up as a partner, you're going to get a special email for the partner. 
that will be for you to set up um, your partner login. Uh, this will be uh, based on your partner account and you'll need to go in and activate that so that you can manage the systems that you have set up for your customers. This account is read only um, so that you can log in and see all your customers in a single pane. Um, but in order to make changes to these systems or add new servers, you're definitely going to have to use the Cloud Console to do that. So uh, what you'll see is for that, for your partner, you should get an email similar to this. It should be add, um, admin something at your login, which is basically the uh, information from the Cloud Console. You can click Activate Account. And then you're going to ask to set a password. So let's set a password that you want based on the properties. And then hit next. Now these are just standard boilerplate license agreements once you get here. So you just check all three, hit accept. And then what you'll see once you log in is your environment or customer. You're going to go to units and you'll see environment number. Uh, this is going to have the manage service. And if I click that, I'm going to get access to the end device. Now, you, you shouldn't be setting up end devices with the partner account. This is for managing those accounts. So um, I'll log out here. So the next thing you need to do is you'll see that there's an email for the device. You'll see this went to Mailinator. If I click on that email, I'll get another activation. This is for the account that the device will use to check in. You'll see it's a different login. You're gonna click on that, and you're gonna get a separate login. You can use the same password or a different one. Click Next. This will have two license agreement options. One, two, hit Accept. That's going to take you directly to that second page that we saw, the management page, so that we can add a device. So I'm going to add an agent for Windows. Okay, I'm downloading the agent down here. I'm going to open the agent, click yes. Click install. This will take a few minutes to install the agent. Um, add a device. So once you do that, you close that first window again. Click add device, and you should have registration via code. So what's going to happen is with the installer, once it's done doing the install, it'll allow, ask you if you want to use a code. Um, this will uh, allow you to select the code, copy, paste it in here, and that will link up the agent with the account here the that you logged in with from the original email here that we got and that will allow you to see the device once it's installed and ready to go um, and then from there as the end user that you've logged in on this not the not the partner account but the end user account you're going to want to set up a backup plan for that server so let's give this a, just another moment here shouldn't be too much longer and then we can go ahead and set up that backup plan after we register our device. And uh, show registration info. So here's our registration code. Okay, so if we copy this, and we go over here to register, and we put in the registration code, and hit check code. Okay, confirm the registration now that the device is checked in. And we're gonna wait for confirmation. See the machine was registered per correctly. It appears in the Cloud Console. Close. Okay. Now we hit Devices, and there it is. So this has now been added, and the next thing I can do is back it up. So under here, as the device-specific login, that is this login account SJC A underscore that I got for the device. I'm going to go to Protect. Once I select the device, go to Protect. And by default, there'll be no backup plan. 
I can change the name, uh, full machine, whatever I want to call it. Hit OK. And I can set what I want to back up. I want to set when I want to back it up. So I can click there and choose daily. So every day, run every day when I want to run it. All these options here that I can check for parameters. I can change how often I keep it. So I can back up by number of backups, by age. So I can do retentions. Uh, I can keep, you know, seven days, four weeks, six months, so I don't keep lots of backups. Um, and I can set things like turn on encryption. Make sure that you remember your password here. Don't forget it, because if you forget it, then uh, you can't do um, restores later. So make sure you put that somewhere safe, you know, last pass or, you know, pass keep or something like that that you have access to that's secured. Um, if you're doing backups for, say, Exchange or SQL, you're going to select the application backup and turn on the part that you want. And then there's backup options. Uh, these things allow you to fine tune it. So you could say compression uh, maximum that will give you better compression of uh, certain types of files. Um, turn on alerts, so no successful backups, two days, etc. Backup file names, backup validation, all these different things. You can go through those based on you know the types of things that you do. Uh, hit done. And once you are ready, go ahead and hit apply. And this will optimize the plan and it will now be ready for backup. Once this is finished, you're going to see that it's going to say, hey, this plan is here. Do you want to back it up right now? OK, so you can hit run now or you can just let it back it up at that time. Um, you're going to want to do this for each machine that you have out there, a separate login and management. And if we uh, are finished with this, we can say we'll log out and log in as, let's go to this admin, copy, paste, well, login is that admin account so you can see how it looks here. As you can see, I can go to videos one. I can click on units, environment, manage service. I should see the same information here that I saw for the other login, but I have the ability to uh, manage this with a little more ability here. I can I can do things like you know start backups, see why they didn't run. I can do that for each device without having to log in multiple times. Manage account will allow me to go back to the account management where I can then drill down to say another customer. Manage that service. And so that's uh, all there is to talk about for the uh, eBaz service. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.